Welcome to Service Dog Universe. My name is Mackenzie. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and do the cortisol alert video. Uh, so first I want to get into uh, what cortisol is and uh, how it can help with people with anxiety and panic disorder and things like that. So cortisol is the stress hormone. Cortisol increases during times of like panic and anxiety and it's uh, fight or flight. Uh, so the reason why cortisol alerts can help is because the dog can actually smell the cortisol increase from your breath. Um, so in order to get the cortisol samples from your breath to get your dog used to it, um, is you need to collect samples and store them and bring them out during training sessions. So I'm going to show you what you guys can use uh, to collect the samples so that you can use that for your dog when you're training. Uh, the first is um, cotton balls. So, um, like I said, the cortisol will um, increase and that can uh, be collected through your saliva. So, one of the things you can do is use regular old cotton balls from the store. Um, so, that's one way. Uh, something else that you can use, um, I've never tried this, but it, I mean you can use it, uh, swabs. Um, the only thing about this is I don't think these will be big enough. Dogs' noses are powerful, don't get me wrong, uh, but I would rather use something bigger. But if this is all you have, you can use it. Um, my personal favorite, and especially if you have a texture issue, the cotton balls won't be a great idea because it does kind of leave like a filmy texture in your mouth. Uh, these I got from Amazon. These are dental rolls and they kind of use these at the dentist um, to kind of like sup up um, extra saliva. So these are actually really cool. Um, I leave these in the packs and um, also you can see the cotton balls also have a Ziploc. Make sure to get ones with a Ziploc because uh, you do not want these Sam these uh, sample collectors to get tainted in any way. So make sure they have the sorry the camera cut off. Make sure they have the, zi the Ziploc. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I have that in my mouth. I'm going to collect the sample. So you're just going to swish it around your mouth. Get that as saturated as you possibly can. Okay, so um, it's pretty saturated. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do um, for proper storage of these, you need freezer bags. So I just got some hefty freezer bags because um, you're going to want to store these in the freezer so that they can keep the scent. Um, you're not going to want to do a whole lot of like freezing and refreezing because that messes up the scent. Uh, and you're also still going to want to not touch the sample. So we're going to open that up and... Eh. I missed the bag. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> okay, so once you have your sample, make sure it's nice and tight and just kind of roll it up. You can put more than one in here, especially for those who have like prolonged anxiety attacks. I can normally get like four or five in here. Uh, sometimes I only get one, but um, make yeah try to get as many as you can, um, especially if you don't have panic attacks that often, um, or you know some people have daily, so that'll be a little easier. Uh, but you can get like a plastic Tupperware container. I heard that uh, glass jars actually work pretty well, so uh, you can use those too. So you're gonna pop it in there. And we're going to put it in the freezer. So the samples can last in the freezer 
freezer for like a long time. I would say about six months it can stay in the freezer. Um, but when you take it out of the freezer and use it for a training session, I would not refreeze it. I would put it in the fridge and you can use and leave it in there for like a few days. Do not leave it in for like a week or two weeks because it, again, the, the sample will not be as good as it was when you first brought it out. So you want to keep it as consistent as possible when you're training your dog. Um, I also want to add that uh, I would only collect samples when you are like at your highest, uh, at your highest with panic or anxiety not when you're kind of feeling uncomfortable um because i and i would also take the samples um when you're feeling about the same so not like down here and up here because you want it to be consistent and you also want it to be obvious to the dog of what they're smelling so do it at the highest as you possibly can i'll be a little e bit easier for them to catch on um so there's that you guys, before you start on the actual training, uh, I, my, my mistake, two mistakes. One was I only had like one sample when I started. I was so excited that I only took one sample and then started her on it. And then I didn't get another sample until like a week later. So um, make sure that you have like eight to ten or more samples before you start your dog on the training because you know when you first have that first training session and then you wait one or two weeks there I mean it, it needs to be consistent so make sure you have more than one sample uh, the second mistake I did was I took um, clean samples so I took samples when I was not anxious and kind of put that in the mix way too early so only focus on getting the cortisol samples uh, after, you know, during a, um, an attack or in heightened anxiety. So make sure you're, you don't do what I did. Uh, I am really sorry you guys didn't get to see her too much in this video. Um, the next one where I show you guys how to start your dog on the actual training, she'll be in it. Uh, so like I uh, said in the last video, this is Suki. She's five months old um, and we already started her on the cortisol training. So she's not super far along, but she's um, a few steps ahead. So we will get to that uh, probably on Saturday, actually. So make sure to subscribe and comment. If you guys have any questions, ask in the comments and I'll get to you as soon as possible. Um, but we will see you guys on Saturday. Bye.